Life hasn't been a bed of roses for me through these years. A lot of domestic abuse happened in my life, and for a while there, I had no purpose in life. I had no reason to get up in the morning. I would save $25 a month out of my check, and I would go shopping for hot dogs, a loaf of bread, mustard, a can of coffee, well, instant coffee, sugar and cream, and that would be my diet. I'd get up in the morning, eat a hot dog, drink a cup of coffee and take my meds. I was diagnosed in 97 with the virus. And the only way that I could get rid of the pain was crack, I thought. I weighed 110 pounds. Food just was not in my plan. I was just a lonely woman and I just didn't care no more. It didn't make no difference how I left this world. I was ready to die before APLA. I was ready to leave this world. I didn't think anybody cared anymore. I fell in love with USC when I was a kid, and it was just the brick buildings and plus the football team. I love the football team. When I got my acceptance letter, I kept reading it and reading it, and I was like, wow, I'm going to SC. It was, it was exciting. I got a phone call, my mom asking me to come home to help care for my pops who had taken ill. Mom started getting sick. Um, I got re-diagnosed with cancer. And then all these bills just mounted. My bills, their bills. It was like a perfect storm. Everything that could go wrong in my life started to go wrong. Two days after my father's funeral, I came home to discover that my condo was no longer mine. Those locks had been changed. Being locked out of something that's mine, it was humiliating. Pictures, yearbooks, diplomas, everything, gone. I won't get the pictures of my parents back. <laughs> I was homeless. My life was in a backpack. A backpack. Back in 2008, I made wedding gowns, evening dresses, Oscar dresses. This is my surgery, it's my forceful surgery. It was, it was my passion. I was on my way to work one day. I almost got hit by a car crossing the street. And uh, I didn't even realize that I couldn't see. I went to the hospital. They did a pressure test on my brain and they realized that my brain was swelling. I had neurosyphilis and found out when I was being released that I was HIV positive. And uh, this nurse gave my mom the information for APLA because she said that I was going to need help. I was over a year into homelessness, figuring out where I was going to take a shower, where am I going to sleep tonight. It was hell. It was hell. Not that there's a good time to be diagnosed with HIV, but that diagnosis, it just felt like somebody strapped weights to my feet put their hands on my head and just push me underwater. And that's probably the first time I asked God, what did I do to you? Why are you doing this? My T cells, they started dropping. I started thinking about taking myself out because this is the last straw right here. By going over to APLA, I started talking to the ladies over there. And uh, I would go to the meetings, some of the groups, the women's committee, to all of them, and ask if they need another volunteer. And uh, from there on, I have been helping. I come over here to the food bank and be passing out the you know food, put, bagging up the food. And we get together, and we don't even have to have music. We just start strutting it around in the <laughs> in the food bank, and everybody cracking up. There they go again. I got put in touch with APLA. They set me up with Tiana Monte. She's my case manager. She inspires me and uh, encourages me not to give up because it's very easy to give up. I didn't think I was ever gonna live alone again, and um, she said that. Why not? Every time I had a, a reason or an excuse from why I didn't even need to be here no more, she always gave me a reason why I should be. And um, she encouraged me to get on meds, and I didn't want to. And it took her a year and a half convincing. Now I'm undetectable. My T cells are 600. 
Prior to getting case management through APLA, I felt like I was navigating homelessness and HIV all by myself, figuring everything out on my own. Anything from how I was gonna pay for care, how I was gonna stay in care, until I got assigned to a case manager at APLA. For the first time, I felt like I wasn't on my own anymore. My case manager was phenomenal. She made sure I had access to care, bus passes. She fought for me, and no one had done that up until that point. By being able to at least get my own food once a week, it takes a lot of weight off of my shoulders. That's one thing I don't have to worry about no more is food. It just brightens up my life to come here every Thursday morning over here and see all these smiling faces. And everybody looks for me. If I'm not there, somebody's on the phone. Are you okay? We miss you today. All right. I would credit APLA for everything that I have today. My housing to my health. Having Tiana as a case manager, she really helped me turn my life around. The way I look at it is God gave me a new pair of shoes and APLA taught me how to tie the shoelaces. And now I have my own home. Ah, oh, this is my home. This is my home. During homelessness, everything was temporary. But with permanent housing, I don't have to worry about having to move. Um, I've got my own apartment where I pay rent. I can have friends come over. I can throw parties. It's a great new start for me. So I think I would be dead if I would never have found APLA. I think I would have given up for sure. I, I learned so much from the team, the support that I have from there. There's so much to, to thank you for. Thank you for treating me like I'm a human being. Thanks for fighting for me. I feel like my life is back on track. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Coming here to the food bank and volunteering, they picked me up from the gutter. I'm going to say it like that. I really can't believe that uh, I came this far. Now I got something to live for. I can see that light at the end of the tunnel now.